okay, go ahead, laugh at Miami. People laugh at Miami. It's, I always feel obligated to defend it a little bit because people make fun of it. It's a wonderful place. Miami's a wonderful place. You have to make some adjustments, uh, certain things you don't do. You would never say out loud. I don't know, I think you have to admit Castro has done some good for Cuba. <laughs> the other big adjustment for me was the driving when I got there. Um, I thought, nobody here knows the law. And I now realize everybody in Miami is driving according to the law of his or her individual country of origin. <laughs> and there's some countries where you just put on that left turn signal first thing in the morning, you know. <laughs> Maybe put it on the night before to make sure it's working. <laughs> it's the only place I've ever lived where the, the driver's manual shows you how to give the finger. <laughs> where people will pass you in a car wash. <laughs> but, Comp compounding the problem of, of the you know, people from many different cultures driving there, you have a lot of retirees from metropolitan New York, uh, New York City area. Wonderful people. Uh, they grew up with public transportation. And they never needed a car. They grew up, they raised their kids, they retired. They lost almost all of their sight and hearing. <laughs> and they moved to Miami and got driver's licenses. I mean, it's, we will give a driver's license. Florida gives you, when alien beings land here from another planet, they will have Florida driver's licenses. <laughs> so anyway, so you, and these people, they're, they're buying their first car, so they're like a big car. A lot of them, they got two Buicks and have them welded together, you know. <laughs> but because they're new to the, the driving concept, uh, they don't know the car should have a front seat. So you get a lot of, you know. But it's a good area, it's a good area for me because I'm, I'm a humor columnist and you need material and this is a very target rich environment, um, <laughs> South Florida. I could tell you a zillion stories of, of only in South Florida things. I'll, I'm not going to waste the whole night doing that, but I will tell you one um, because I think it sort of sums up this could not have happened anywhere else. This happened to a guy I know, his name is Kurt Ivey and when it happened he was the chief of police of Homestead, which is a city south of Miami. And as chief of police, Kurt was asked to speak at a citizen's crime watch meeting. And it was a nice evening in a nice neighborhood, nice house, so they're meeting outdoors on the patio. And Kurt, chief of police, is explaining the citizen's crime watch concept to these people. And while he's doing that, he is almost hit on the head by a 75 pound bale of cocaine falling from the sky. <laughs> That, that truly happened. It was a smuggler's plane coming over from the Bahamas. Fairly common occurrence. It was intercepted by a U.S. Customs Service jet trying to force the smugglers down. They're about 100 feet off the ground at this point. The smugglers in the back of their plane are shoving these bales of cocaine out. They shoved about 20 of them out before they were forced down in Naples on the other side of the state, which set off a treasure hunt in the Everglades <laughs> the next day. But the point is that the chief of police was almost killed by falling cocaine. <laughs> and that doesn't happen in Cleveland. Uh, so I tell people, well, in South Florida, it's not enough to just say no to drugs. You may, you may need a bomb shelter. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I've always been, is there a reason I have duct tape? It's like all the speakers get duct tape. Is this like a, thank you, thank you. Uh, Take it home and cherish it. I have a home cherishing device for, you know, and anyway. <laughs>